So the first rule I want you to remember as we go forward into this brave new world is to be fascinated by this stuff. Don't let it blow over your head. Don't say, I'm not that techie guy. I'm not interested in these things. You have to be interested in these things. These are going to change our world. The second one is when you figure out what's going on, be good. Do good. Get to the right place in the right way. And lastly, let's use this opportunity, this change in the world to help each other, to do things so that we all end up in a better, happier place. Thank you very much. Fourteen-year-old Mahir is watching fruit flies move around. He's like, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we had flying robots that moved like fruit flies did? So he entered the Google Science Fair and he won. His project on making flying robots that mimic the movements of fruit flies won. And the next thing he knew, MIT and Stanford had called him and they've made these flying robots and they use them. Sorry, I get a little emotional about this. Uh, they use them to go into buildings to see if there's people alive in there after an earthquake. So at 14, this guy, nobody said to him, you're too young. He didn't say to himself, he's too young. Uh, he's saving lives because of um, not thinking about things based on age. We're sitting around saying, let's spend money talking to baby boomers or to Generation X or to millennials or to this group of people or that group of people. And what we've proven with this data is your age has nothing to do with how you're motivated, what you find valuable, what you want, what you need, what you expect out of life. Neither is your gender, neither is your race or your marital status or how much money you make. Instead, what you find most important is what is most motivating to you. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it. What you find most important in life is the thing that's going to help you make decisions about what to buy and who to hang out with and what you want to talk about. It seems to make sense, but there's never been a database about this before. We have proof that values create an incredible alignment around all things. Our top 10, what we call value graphic profiles. So these are kind of, you could think about them as replacements for these demographic categories of generation X, Y, Z, millennials, whatever. We still have to have a way to target stuff, right? We can't be all things to all people. So we found the top 10 most aligned value sets and we can use these instead of those generalized categories of age. And these groups agree with each other on those 340 variables as much as 89% of the time. Boomers, 13% of the time a values-based target audience 89% of the time. That's remarkable. That's almost a polar opposite in terms of how aligned they are on all 340 different things that are in our database. Some information about one of these groups that your conference is particularly focused on. We call this group the Environmental Assembly. They represent 17% of the entire population of Canada and the United States. Their primary motivator around every decision they make, large and small, is what is it going to do to the planet? They agree on everything, all 340 variables, 82% of the time. That's remarkable. Remember, boomers only agree 13% of the time. So talking to this group, here's some things we know about them. They share an extreme concern for the environment, and for them it's very personal. This is not a large-scale problem that needs to be fixed. This is about what I can do today on a personal level. I, I take full responsibility for what I've done, and I want to have ways given to me that I can fix the problems that I see around me. So that's just one out of ten. You might find that your particular audience is very stacked in favor of what we call the Home Hunters Union. Now, don't get confused. These folks aren't necessarily going to buy a new home. They think they might, and what they're saying to us is that they don't feel at home. And they think that the obvious answer to that might be to get a new one. But it might just be that they need a new relationship, or they need a new job, or they need a change of scenery, or they need to, I don't know, whatever. They, something's not right. They're just a little restless. They're a little bit unsure of what's going on, and they keep wondering if it might not be better if they do something else, or if they go somewhere else. So their two biggest values, the two ways you can motivate this group, if this is who comes back after you've done your value graphics ranking, is by telling them about how this issue, this initiative you're trying to get past is going to meet their basic needs and how it's going to impact their experiences. 
We also know that they're very curious about other ways to be. They're the ones who go to open houses, even though they're not shopping. They just kind of go and see how everybody else got their living room set up, because they're kind of interested in what's going on and whether or not you need a table behind the sofa. Uh, they probably go to travel logs, even if they have no intention of traveling, because they're just curious. There might be something better in another part of the world that I haven't thought about yet. Another quick example. Imagine trying to put together a shopping mall. And the shopping mall, your goal, your assignment from Don Forsgren, build me a shopping mall where every store appeals to millennials. It's going to be the, called the Mall of Millennials. What could you possibly put in there that every single millennial is going to enjoy? Were they all going to shop at the Gap? No. Are they all going to want a skateboard? No. Are they all going to want avocado toast? Maybe. But that's about the only one. <laughs> You can't build them all for millennials because millennials are as different from each other as they are from boomers and as you are from me and as you are from her. We're all different people. We have nothing to, it has nothing to do with our age.